Prof, let's talk about local government autonomy. Yeah. At the moment, there are divergent views about the autonomy in granted local government. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there's too much unitarism. Exactly. We are aware that Shiyima Kinde of uh, <laughs> Oyo State has actually come out fully against the federal government and some of his, uh, uh, the local government chairman in the state. What is your own view about the local government autonomy? Okay. Let me say that I am a proponent of local government, uh, what I would call effectiveness and efficiency. Okay, the local government being the closest to the people. Now I've just even indicated to you that there may even should be consideration for certain town administration because of either the size or the special circumstances. So I'm a full advocate of local government. I also want to indicate to you that, I mean, when they talk about this uh, uh, home bread or no home bread, I lived in the United States from 1978 continuously to, 19, to 2014, even though I came home back 2011. So uh, I lived in the States for that long as a graduate student and as a university professor teaching chemical engineering in Washington, D.C. I lived in the state called Maryland. And not, I went to the capital of Maryland, which is uh, uh, capital of Maryland, only twice in the, all the time I lived in Maryland. All my activities were at the local government level. Hmm. Okay, all at the local government level, that's number one. Number two is that uh, the local government chairman of the Montgomery County that I was, was a Howard University professor, a colleague of mine, a law professor. He was re-elected eight times, two year terms. He did so well, they wanted to have him be governor. I said, no, I am happy with my local mm -hmm. government. So, our schools were, were good, our security, our fire service, mm -hmm. our parks, our recreation, everything was good. The governor, okay, cannot just come in and say anything within the local government. Because these people will say, we elected this person. <laughs> the president cannot come to Maryland and come to our, among our county and not talk with the, he will not take him into court. It will be the, the, the uh, county, something I call them county administrators, or, that he will come and meet. I hope you just saw yesterday too, uh, Olympics. Yes. Huh? It well, was the mayor the of, of, uh, of uh, Paris that handed a flag to the mayor of Los Angeles okay, Next, uh, for, for the Olympics of 2028. If it had been Africa, ah, it would be the president of Paris <laughs> <laughs> handing a flag to the president of uh, America. <laughs> that is how local governors should run. should run. People should be able to hold their local government accountable. But in this same US that I'm talking about, it's a federal institution, it's a federal place. Mm. Okay? Texas has, I don't know, I think they have 340 counties and boroughs. My state, Maryland, I think, has 20 something. Every, every uh, state determines the number of local government it has, whether how long each election is, whether they, they are paid or not paid, whether it's part-time or not part-time, depending on the circumstances of your state. But when you have a constitution that one size fits all to everybody, mm. governor pay is paid the same amount of money. We commissioners are paid the same amount of money. P.S. pays the same amount of money. ETC, ETC. It does not make for efficiency. So any move 
towards more unitarism. It's a movement away from federalism and makes things ineffective and inefficient. You subscribe to the Shea in this position? I do. The states were created by fiat. None of the states was created based on uh, plebiscites. The people were not consulted. The military woke up. And depending on, on persuasive ability, mm. they gave them states. But, yes, even countries too. We were not, we were, we were not uh, many, virtually all the countries in the world. I doubt, I have to think hard whether there were any countries who they said, okay, we, we want to be a country and they do a vote and then they are given a country. So you have to deal with the reality that you are in. So we have states. Local governments were also created by, uh, you know that none, no state was created by a civilian administration. Mm. No local government created by a, civ a civilian administration. There are rules in the constitution for creation, but they are very onerous. Mm. Okay, they are very onerous. So, uh, if you now decide to just take over from the federal government, the federal government is another government like the state government. Mm. The federation is different from the federal government. Okay? So the federation is the federal government plus the states. The federal government cannot be just so much bigger than all the 36 states put together. It has its role. The federal government is the 37th government of the country. It's the 38th government of the country, if we take the federal uh, FCT. It has a role that is different from all the other states. But it is not a master-slave relationship. You see, we should be in a cooperative federalism where the federal government sees its role as being cooperative with the other 37 governments in the country. It should not see itself as a father just dictate to the others. Okay? So, uh, uh, again, I believe it should be a true tier. It's federalism, a true tier at the federal level and true tier at the state level. If the federal government wants to impact on states, it can do it through some competitive grants. You know, because, true, the federal government may, because, you know, because we have party politics, it may have a policy that differs from the policy of a particular state because of their own uh, political party machinery. But there may be local governments within that state that likes a policy of the federal government. Okay. It should be able to do it. But the federal government can use his own allocation, okay? Because there's really no federal person, Rabbi. So there's an allocation to the federal government that it can use in certain ways to equalize, uh, uh, to redistribute uh, richness policies. So you can you can decide to say. I have this policy and I have this 20 billion naira to spend on the policy. Those local governments that want to do it, I will provide grants to them and they compete for it. Not just allocations. Or I may say that I have this amount of money to spend on local government. It should be passed through the states. Okay? So there are two ways. There will be, there, we may have a some money to spend on all local governments, okay? or it may have certain policies to promote in which it wants certain local governments to apply. And they'll be able to apply. Same as states, okay? 
if you, if a government has if a federal government has a policy, it may say I have this policy. Those states who want who are in agreement with the policy make proposals. Those states that do not have uh, support this policy, they will lose something by not taking part in the proposal. That is what federal government should do. They should not use a stick to beat on states or use their long arm to get into local government affairs. Now, the government went to court and Supreme Court gave a verdict, I mean, imposing yeah. the local government autonomy on the states. Well, I don't, I've not read the CTC, I'm not a lawyer, because I've also appeared in China's TV on this, on this issue. There is a section 310, I believe, that is very clear about the fact that the federal government is supposed to act with the states, and the states are supposed to act with the local government. It did not, and in law, they say that if a certain thing is very clearly stated, the intention of the framers is clear there, and you, as an interpreter, do not have any right to interpret. So the Supreme Court was doing a lot of judicial activism. I don't even think they said we have now granted autonomy to the states. We've been using the term autonomy very loosely. But like everything, the Supreme Court are human beings. Some of them have their own political uh, propensities and proclivities. So if there will still be certain things that states must approve, if, okay, so if, there will still be a study of the local government, this ruling, and the, the National Assembly will decide whether it is new laws they will pass or constitutional amendment. If it's a constitutional amendment, it will come to the states for approval, two thirds of the states must approve. And if Nigeria's unique federalism will be a three tier one, then we'll see. Okay? So we, I'm sure we will live by it, but it will be an unusual one. But we'll see. Do you see the request, the request of the federal government to ask the National Assembly to process a law that will make uh, the local government elections uh, to be conducted by yeah. INEC sailing through. It's too unitarizing to have INEC conduct not only 36, you know, they have 36 governors. They have, I believe it is 8,900 and, no, 36 That's governors. Mm -hmm. They have 360. Uh, House of Rep, 100 uh, senators. Those are the are governors. So that's these governors, one presidential election, 360 uh, 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 House of Rep, and 100 senators. They have those. And they are still struggling. Now they have to, they will now have to conduct now, there are 8,908 wards in the country, 774 local, local government and 8,984, something like that, wards, because they will have, they have to do councillors' election. It's too much work for them. It's too much federalizing. I even think that there should be some states who should just say, we will have, it will be zero party election we will have in our, in our local government. Some may say it's a, a political party. Some will say, look, uh, zero party. Some will say it will be part time. Others will, you know. So because when you have such a large number of uh, people, there will be, it's too unitarizing. I, I don't think it will sail too. Okay, it's one thing to propose it. It's another thing for it to sail through. I don't think it will sail through. I don't hope it should sail through.
And do you hold the do you don't do you agree that the local governments have not been had not before now been properly run under the state government? I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree that that but when you say that something has not been done, you don't propose another solution uh, that will just make it worse. The distribution of roles between the federal and state and local government should be clearer and sharper. The role of the federal government should be reduced. Some of the things that the federal government are doing should be passed on to the state governments. The present role of the state should be modified. Okay? I do not see anything that the state is doing now that the federal government should be doing. But I see something that the federal government are doing that the states should be doing. So that's why I say the role of the federal government should be reduced. The role of the state should be modified. So some things should be reduced and it should get some things should be from the uh, federal government. The role of the local government should be increased. I don't see anything that the local government is doing now that should be turned on to the state. But I see some things that the state are doing that should be turned on to the local government. So that's my position. Reduce the role of the government, modify the role of the state government, and increase the role of the local government. When you do that, ensure that those who become local government chairmen and councillors fully understand their importance. And therefore, you don't just choose any local riffraff. I'm not saying all uh, they're riffraff, but I, I, even our, cha our chairmen, some of them are pretty good. And, and I'm not even saying only of this thing, all they should write. But the councillors are a, a mixed bag, a big mixed bag, okay? And so, but you need to have, if, if this is agreed, if we actually sit down, that is really the conversation we should have. The, the governors, when they're talking about bad governance and so on, we, we should drill down to what it is that we are demanding, okay? You can look at the exclusive list. Reduce the exclusive list, okay? Even reduce the concurrent list. The concurrent list is between this, is what the federal and the state can do together. Make that as small as possible. The residual list should be with the state. And the states themselves too should have their own uh, exclusive concurrent and residual with the local government. With the local government. People of the fountain.